Yevgeny Prigozhin, the leader of Russia's Wagner militia, launched a military revolution against Putin and his government. As a result, the group has taken control of important cities and mocked the president, who dubbed them traitors, as they moved towards Moscow on Saturday. As Moscow is under lockdown as forces dig in to prepare to protect the city, Putin spoke to the Russian people on Saturday, saying that the military chief had stabbed him in the back. Asserting that they are ready to die, Prigozhin and his feared 25,000-member Wagner militia are in charge of the southern Russian city of Rostov-on-Don and have vowed to get retribution for a military action by Putin's forces that they claim resulted in the deaths of several of their men. The regiment advanced towards Moscow with little resistance, passing through the midway city of Voronezh and travelling as far north as Yelets. A large oil store was observed catching fire in the city as a chopper flew overhead. Large troop convoys, believed to be Wagner mercenaries, have been seen travelling north from Voronezh in social media footage. They are also rumoured to be travelling to Volgograd and Krasnodar, two important cities. In response, Russia has stepped up security in Moscow, gathered soldiers ready to defend against the invasion, and urged the military to unite behind President Putin. Putin made the incorrect decision, according to a statement Saturday on the Wagner Telegram channel. The worse it is for him. We'll have a new president soon. Prior to Sunday night's declaration of war against Moscow's military leadership, Prigozhin, a former confidant of Vladimir Putin, said in a video that the top senior officer in the command post had evacuated as soon as he knew that Wagner soldiers were around. According to a Russian security source, Military installations in Voronezh, which is located roughly 500 kilometers 310 miles south of Moscow, have also been taken over by Wagner fighters. Given that it is the midway point between Rostov and Moscow, this would be important. In response to an armed uprising by the Wagner mercenary organization, the governor of Russia's Voronezh province warned on Saturday that the army was implementing necessary military measures in the area. Also said to have Wagner forces nearby are the southern cities of Krasnodar and Volgograd, however this has not been confirmed. In the meantime, it was obvious that pro-Putin troops on the outskirts of Moscow were making headway against the Wagner coup army that was approaching the capital. Russian soldiers were seen setting up their positions near a bridge across the Oka River. They used grenade launchers, machine guns, and barrage equipment. Other images showed military erecting barriers and machine gun nests outside of the city as Putin approved a decree allowing for up to 30 days of detention of anyone in places where martial is in effect, but this has not yet occurred. Air attacks on the Wagner convoy travelling north had reportedly been seen by witnesses. Prigozhin said it was targeted by Russian strikes and helicopter fire shortly after this information surfaced. In a telegram post, Prigozhin stated, We were fired upon, first by artillery strikes and then by helicopters. An artillery attack on an armored vehicle during the Wagner march is purportedly captured on video and posted online. After Prigozhin stormed the Southern Defense Command in Rostov-on-Don, which played a significant part in the invasion of Ukraine, they also raided the Wagner unit's headquarters in St. Petersburg. The Russian Security Service reported finding $47 million in cash on the property, which according to Prigozhin is for his men's wages and other costs.
Putin encouraged those engaged to end any violent opposition, describing the group's activities as equivalent to armed mutiny. Putin was said to have departed Moscow on Saturday afternoon, despite Kremlin officials' denials and claims to the contrary. According to real-time flight data, a presidential aircraft connected to Vladimir Putin made a northward journey from Moscow to Tver before turning off its transponder. Other corporate aircraft were spotted departing the city in the direction of St. Petersburg, with prominent Putin supporters supposedly making their way to Turkey. Prigogine declared that he had 25,000 soldiers under his command and that he would overthrow Shoigu, the head of the Russian military, in an armed uprising. He urged the army to show no opposition, saying that this was not a military coup, but a march of justice. Government representatives had ordered the residents to stay inside, but several were seen outside watching what was occurring and even live-streaming it on their mobile devices. Now that Putin has contacted close friend and Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko to update him on the situation, Sergei Sabianin, the mayor of Moscow, is claimed to have announced that all public activities have been cancelled. Additionally, it was said that Prigozhin's side was taken by the 22nd GRU Military Intelligence Special Forces Unit. Later on Saturday, video footage that claimed to show a significant oil warehouse in Voronezh on fire went viral online. A pro-Putin strike helicopter is said to have bombarded the facility in an effort to prevent the Wagner Kuand group as it approaches Moscow. The explosion from the impact sent thick, poisonous black smoke and a fireball into the air. Soon later, the helicopter was shot down. Over 100 firemen were battling the gasoline tank fire. In the meanwhile, as they moved closer to Moscow, Wagner was said to have taken control of significant military facilities in the Voronezh region. Officials in St. Petersburg were taking down posters for the Wagner unit. The Deputy Defense Minister of Russia, Yunusbek Yevkarov, and the Deputy Commander of the General Staff, Vladimir Alexeyev, were seen in a video posted on Telegram on Saturday meeting with the leader of the mercenaries, Yevgeny Prigozhin, in Rostov. Prigozhin requested that the Russian government hand up Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu and Chief of the General Staff Valery Drasimov in the video, whose provenance could not be independently verified. Prigozhin said that he and his forces were saving Russia in the video. We want Shoigu and the head of the General Staff, stated Prigozhin. We are here until they are here. We are preventing Rostov from moving towards Moscow. In the video, Yevkarov and Alexei Evans successfully attempted to convince Prigozhin to evacuate his men from Rostov on Don. Today, Putin said to the people of Russia, This is a criminal, adventuristic campaign. It is comparable to an armed mutiny. We will protect ourselves and thwart this hostile action. We are battling for the survival, safety, and territorial integrity of our people. It has to do with Russia's millennia old past. We must take all necessary steps to eliminate this threat. It's an attempt to internally destabilize us. In the eyes of those who are fighting on the front, this is treason. This is a stab in the back of our troops and the Russian people, the commander declared. What we are facing now is treason, a somber-looking Putin want his countrymen. Everyone who deliberately set out on the path of betrayal will suffer inevitable punishment, 
the 70-year-old despot said. The necessary instructions were given to the armed forces. As president of Russia, the marshal-in-chief, and a Russian citizen, he said, I am doing all I can to thwart this attack and to protect the freedom and security of our people. Russia has been betrayed by those who are rebelling. 180 Russian military and security personnel at a border crossing in the Voronezh area put down their weapons and declined to obstruct the Wagner PMC's operations while Putin spoke. On Saturday, Prigozhin reacted by informing the president that the charge of treason against him was wrong. Nobody will turn themselves in at the behest of the president, the FSB or anybody else, he said. Because we do not want the nation to continue to be ruled by bureaucracy, deceit and corruption, Prigozhin remarked, when we came here, we once again confirmed. A lot, a huge amount of territory was lost after seizing control of Rostov-on-Don. Three to four times as many soldiers were killed than were reported to superiors. And what is reported is ten times less than what is presented on television. Losses per day might reach up to 1,000 individuals on some days. The so-called refuseniks, who refuse not out of fear but rather because they have no way out, no weapons, and no control, are among the dead missing, and injured. When he realized that we were getting close to the building, the chief of the general staff immediately left this area, he said. In another video that was uploaded on Saturday afternoon, he said that his men reached Rostov-on-Don in southern Russia without firing a shot, and that no one was killed. In a second audio statement released on Saturday, Prigozhin claimed that while his soldiers were targeted by the Russian Air Force, they were still able to take control of Rostov's military headquarters without firing a single shot. An explosion was heard close to the military headquarters that Prigozhin's Wagner Group ostensibly commanded in Rostov just before he made his speech. Where, how big, and if the explosion caused any damage were not immediately known. Photos from Saturday morning showed Wagner warriors moving through Rostov on Don streets. One of the images showed a fighter flashing the symbol for triumph. Some of the Wagner warriors looked to be displaying a silver tapering around their arm or leg as a token of loyalty to one another. Social media videos showed soldiers in front of the southern military headquarters, which is important for controlling the Ukraine conflict, and others could be seen less than half a mile away around the Interior Ministry's Rostov headquarters. The Institute for the Study of War declared this morning that seizing the military command in Rostov-on-Don would have significant repercussions for Russia's capacity to repel Ukraine's counteroffensive. According to the research group, Prigozhin could have drastically overestimated his chances of getting Putin's support when he advocated for an armed uprising. The catastrophic repercussions of a failed armed uprising imply that Prigozhin thought his options to be just as dangerous. As the first photos from Rostov started to surface on Friday night, Alexander Weinman, an expert on Ukraine and former member of the National Security Council, tweeted, Those are not Russian National Guard troops. That appears to be Wagner forces entering SMD headquarters. General Valery Gerasimov, the humiliated leader of Putin's army, was reportedly holed up in a civilian flat with his friends in Rostov, according to Prigozhin-aligned media. After Wagner troops grabbed control of the city, 
the head of the army general staff withdrew from the war command center there with people loyal to him. The Russian state is currently facing its largest security challenge in recent memory, according to the British military ministry's statement on Saturday. According to BBC correspondent Laura Kuntzberg on Saturday, the Emergency Committee for the UK government, known as COBRA, was gathering to talk about the current state of affairs in Russia. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak was interviewed by Kunzberg. He stated that he will consult with allies and asked all parties to the situation in Russia to spare people suffering. Governments from all around the world are keeping a careful eye on what is happening as Russia's surrounding nations beef up their security. Spoke today with G7 foreign ministers and the EU High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy to address the current situation in Russia, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken stated on Saturday. As the situation worsens, the United States will remain in close coordination with allies and partners. Both Estonia and Latvia have increased their border patrols, and Latvia has said it would not permit Russian people to enter while the crisis is still in progress. The Wagner Group's dispute with the Russian Defense Ministry escalated into actual military conflict in the early hours of Saturday, the UK's Defence Ministry tweeted. According to Prigozhin, the action was a march for freedom, and at least two places were where Wagner Group fighters crossed into Russia from seized Ukraine, the MOD reported. It said that Wagner has almost certainly occupied key security sites in Rostov-on-Don, a city in southern Russia including the Russian military command center in charge of the conflict in Ukraine. How this issue develops over the next several hours will depend largely on how faithful Russia's security services, particularly the Russian National Guard, are. In a routine intelligence update, the British military ministry described this as the worst threat to the Russian state in recent memory. Further Wagner troops are marching north through the Vornezh Oblast, most likely with Moscow in mind, it continued. With very little evidence of combat between Wagner and Russian security forces, some have probably stayed quiet, caving into Wagner, the report reads. On Saturday, Wagner's armoured vehicles were spotted travelling quickly through the Voronezh area hundreds of kilometers from the city. The Russian military seemed to admit Wagner had shot down three of their assault helicopters. Prigozhin began his unusual move after demanding the resignation of Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu and threatening to hold Russian military officials accountable for the deaths of hundreds of his mercenaries during an airstrike. The head of the private army further said that the Russian military is deceiving Putin and concealing the remains of an additional 2,000 soldiers in order to hide losses in Ukraine. On Friday night, 1,000 miles from Moscow, as his Wagner soldiers drew near Rostov, Prigozhin said they would take all necessary steps to overthrow the nation's military leadership. We will destroy anyone who stands in our way, he said. We are making progress and will persevere until the very end. In response, Moscow streets were filled with Russian military vehicles. Now the most essential thing is to overcome the foreign and internal adversary, who is eager to shred our motherland, said former president and Putin supported a Mitri Medvedev in a post. The president, the supreme commander of the nation's armed forces, needed support if the state was to be saved. 
Splitting apart and betraying one another was the road to the greatest tragedy, a global catastrophe. We won't permit it. The adversary will lose. Our team will prevail. Maria's Arca over, a spokesperson for the Russian Foreign Ministry, also urged Russians to support their president as images revealed a sizable police and military presence guarding important locations including Moscow's Red Square and the Kremlin. The commander of the Chechen military likewise emphasized allegiance to the president and urged his troops to assist in putting down the insurrection. According to reports, Hitler has dispatched soldiers to battle the Wagner force. Prigogine was accused of instigating an armed revolt by the FSB security services, who earlier announced that they had launched a criminal investigation into him and demanded his arrest. The incident looks to be the worst domestic military crisis Putin has seen since he gave the order to launch a full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February of last year, but the circumstances on the ground are still unclear. Putin faces a serious challenge, according to retired CIA officer and former Pentagon official Mick Mulroy, from Prigogine. The Russian military may have to switch its priorities from stopping the Ukrainian advance to the Russian government's self-preservation if Mr. Prigozhin's warnings come true, he said. Even if this coup attempt fails, it clearly shows that those who were closest to the conflict are aware that it was a grave error. As a result of worries that the debilitated ruler is unable to put Wagner under control, many members of Putin's inner circle reportedly called on the head of the Security Council, Nikolai Patrashev, to assume control on Saturday. The influential Russian Security Council Secretary Patrashev, 71, is said to be in command of the reaction. The general SVR Telegram channel said that the president has essentially withdrawn himself from solving the current crisis. According to their assessment, Patrashev declined to assume leadership of the administration but thought the armed uprising should be severely suppressed. The instability the attempted coup is predicted to generate is being welcomed in Ukraine, whose forces are engaged in a counter-offensive against Russian forces after their invasion in February of last year. Volodymyr Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, declared on Saturday that Russia's weakness is obvious and warned that the longer Moscow retains soldiers and mercenaries in Ukraine, the more turmoil it will bring about at home. For a long time, Russia employed propaganda to cover up its weakness and the foolishness of its regime, he said on Twitter. There is currently so much disarray that no falsehood can cover it up. And all of this is due to a single individual, who, despite being able to produce nothing else, keeps scaring people with the year 1917. The apparent mutiny by Wagner mercenary head Yevgeny Prigogine against the Russian military on Saturday prompted him to post the remarks on the Telegram messaging app. Russia's vulnerability is clear. Complete weakness, Zelensky claimed. And the more turmoil, suffering, and issues Russia creates for itself later, the longer it keeps its troops and mercenaries on our territory. Mikhailo Podolyak, a presidential advisor from Ukraine, stated that a violent civil war had broken out in Russia. The beginning of the Ukrainian counteroffensive irrevocably destabilized the Russian elites, deepening the internal strife that arose after the Ukrainian defeat. We are in fact seeing the start of a civil war today. With little to no resistance, Prigozhin's gang seizes military bases, administrative centers, 
and whole cities while disarming haphazard police and military personnel. Putin labels Prigozhin a traitor and an outlaw and issues the proper instructions to the secret services, but nothing occurs, resulting in a crisis of government and the real loss of power. At the same time, Wagner keeps moving towards Moscow. Ukraine is still making its own way towards the boundaries from 1991. This would imply that Kiev would regain sovereignty over other invaded areas, including the Crimea and the Donbass. On Twitter, Anton Gershenko, the advisor to the Interior Minister, added, Today, Ukraine has gotten a little bit closer to total victory over Russia and complete repatriation of its territory, including Crimea. A disgusting, but helpful in this instance monster, Prigozhin, organized an armed uprising against Shoigu and Drasimov, took control of the southern military district of the Russian Federation's headquarters, and is now moving his forward forces towards Voronezh and subsequently Moscow. In reality, Prigozhin has long wished to replace Putin and install his own dictatorship in Russia. Therefore this is a rebellion not against war criminals Shoigu and Drasimov. As Prigozhin said that his troops were prepared to go all the way against Russian military commanders, Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov was cited by the state news agency as stating that all of the nation's security services were constantly reporting to Putin. According to a source at a security service, security was increased on Friday night at government buildings, transit hubs and other important areas in Moscow. The armed insurrection by the Wagner commander was covered extensively on the main page of the Russian state-run media in the meanwhile, and Google News was apparently banned throughout the nation as the dispute heated up. According to Prigozhin, his actions do not constitute a military takeover. But in a flurry of audio communications that could not be independently confirmed, and in which his voice occasionally shifted, he seemed to imply that his 25,000-person militia was on its way to Moscow to overthrow the defense ministry's top brass. The lives of many tens of thousands of Russian troops were devastated, according to Prigozhin, who declared that those responsible will face punishment. I kindly request that no one show opposition. He declared, there are 25,000 of us, and we are going to figure out why chaos is happening in the country, pledging to defeat any air forces or roadblocks in Wagner's path. He said, we will quickly destroy anyone who attempts to resist a threat. In his increasingly bitter dispute with the ministry earlier on Friday, Prigozhin appeared to cross a new boundary when he claimed that the Kremlin's justification for invading Ukraine was based on fabrications created by the army's senior brass. Prigozhin has been openly criticizing Russia's top general, Valery Drasimov, and Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu of gross ineptitude and depriving Wagner of ammunition and supplies for months. Prigozhin's words are actually appeals for the outbreak of an armed civil war on Russian soil, and his acts constitute a stab in the back of Russian service members against pro-fascist Ukrainian troops, the FSB claimed. We implore thee, to avoid making grave errors, to cease using force against the Russian people, to stop carrying out Prigozhin's illegal and treacherous directives, and to take steps to imprison him. In a video appeal, Lieutenant General of the Army Vladimir Alexeyev pleaded with Prigozhin to change his mind. You are trying to encroach on the President's authority, he replied.
because only the president has the right to appoint the top leadership of the armed forces. In a different video, Wagner was admonished to start by General Sergei Surovikin, the deputy commander of Russian forces in Ukraine whom Prigozhin had complimented in the past. The enemy is only waiting for our domestic political climate to get worse, according to Surovikin. You must surrender to the will and order of the Russian Federation's People's President before it is too late. It must be done. He said, stop the columns and bring them back to their permanent bases. Former Putin friend Prigogin has been engaged in a nasty spat with Moscow in recent months. Wagner oversaw Russia's conquest of the Ukrainian city of Bokhmut last month, marking the country's largest win in 10 months. Up to this point, Prigogin has exploited this military triumph to openly criticize the Defense Ministry's leadership. Until recently, the Defense Ministry has mostly disregarded his criticism, at least in public. Unverified footage that was uploaded to a Wagner-related Telegram channel depicted the alleged aftermath of an airstrike against Wagner soldiers. It displayed a woodland with little fires blazing and trees that seemed like they had been violently smashed. One body appeared, but there was no other obvious sign of an attack. A missile attack was launched on the camps of PMC private military company Wagner, said the caption. Several casualties. Eyewitnesses claim that the attack was carried out by the Russian Ministry of Defense's military, and that it came from behind. On Friday, he rejected Putin's main rationale for invading Ukraine on February 2024 last year for the first time. The war was essential. So Shoigu may advance to martial status. Prigozhin stated in a videotape that he did it so that he could get a second Hero of Russia medal. The war was not necessary to denazify or demilitarize Ukraine. When Russia attacked Ukraine, Marit Gabadulin, a former Wagner leader who had relocated to France, warned Reuters that Wagner's men were likely to support Prigozhin. We have denigrated the army for a very long time. He is their leader, thus it makes sense that they would back him. If anybody gets in their path, they won't hesitate to fight the army. On the front lines of Ukraine, the Kremlin believed that Kiev was preparing an offensive close to the Bakhmut hotspot by taking advantage of rivalries between the Wagner mercenary organization and the Russian military. According to Prigozhin, the Council of Commanders of PMC Wagner has made a decision, the evil that the military leadership of the country brings must be stopped. Tensions between Moscow and the private military corporation are reportedly at an all-time high. On Friday, the dreaded Wagner commander unleashed a vicious assault on Russia's military leadership, alleging that Putin is being misled by mentally sicker asterisk asterisk holes in high command over colossal tactical defeats in Ukraine. The Wagner leader's rage reached a boiling point on Friday when he posted a video showing what he said was the destruction caused by Russian bombers on the mercenary group's bases, despite the fact that they had fought with Putin in the conflict. After criticizing during his profanity-filled outburst directed at the country's top military command, Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu, on Telegram, he alleged that Russia bombed its own mercenary troops. Prigozhin said that Shoigu personally directed the strike on Wagner at the Russian military headquarters in the southern city of Rostov-on-Don before cowardly escaping. He made a reference to Shoigu and remarked, 
This vermin will be stopped. He yelled at the army not to oppose Wagner's efforts to restore justice, saying that the evil embodied by the country's military leadership must be stopped. In the video, Prigogine said, We were prepared to make concessions to the Defense Ministry, surrender our weapons. Today, after determining that we were still standing, they launched missile attacks against our back camps. In a series of enraged audio recordings made public by his spokesman, he lamented the deaths of a large number of his warriors and allies. The Russian Defense Ministry refuted the allegations that the strikes had taken place, claiming that the assertions do not correspond to reality and that they were a provocation. The ministry also stated that the Russian armed forces continue to conduct combat operations in Ukraine. Ukraine warned the Kremlin in a tweet on Saturday night that we are watching, appearing to make light of the situation Putin is currently in. In the course of Kyiv's counter-offensive, according to Prigozhin, Moscow's soldiers were withdrawing in the east and south of Ukraine. That directly refuted Putin's claims that Ukraine was losing catastrophic numbers of soldiers and that the fighting had ceased. Prigozhin declared, We are washing ourselves in blood. Nobody is carrying backup supplies. The dockers deceit, they tell us, he said, alluding to the political and military authorities in Russia. Prigozhin has just acknowledged controlling the elusive mercenary squad and even meddling in US elections after years of operating covertly. In the longest and most likely deadly combat of the conflict, his forces supported by tens of thousands of prisoner recruits were crucial to Russia's seizure of the town of Bokhmut in the Donetsk area. Rally has a controversial individual gained such prominence so quickly in Russian politics under Putin. Prigozhin advanced from a humble background to join Putin's closest circle. After being found guilty of fraud and theft during the closing years of the USSR, he served nine years in jail. He started a mediocrely successful hot dog company during the upheaval of the 1990s. From there, he entered the restaurant industry and founded a high-end restaurant in St. Petersburg that served Putin before switching from his position in the KGB to local politics. Prigozhin, however, has recently gotten involved in a contentious power battle with the Defense Ministry. He has charged Moscow's monstrous bureaucracy with hindering military advancements and accused Moscow's armed services of trying to steal wins in Ukraine from his soldiers. Wagner has reportedly been present in war areas including Syria, Libya, Mali, and the Central African Republic, where it is alleged to have committed atrocities and usurped government authority.